Hello baseball fans, I'm Chris Durrell. I'm here with RotorPros.com to bring you my daily fantasy MLB breakdown for Thursday, July 25th. We've got two games going on right now. Um, there's an afternoon game with Washington at Colorado, but we're going to be concentrating on the six-game main slate tonight. We're going to go through, we're going to look at some pitchers they are going to be targeting, as well as some top stacks, um, some teams that we're going to want to stack in both cash games as well as GPP formats. If you've got any questions, make sure to hit us up in the Rotopros member chat. Um, if you're not a Rotopros member yet, make sure to get over to rotopros.com, get your free trial for your weekly, monthly, or yearly subscription. And if you use promo code MLB today, you're going to receive 50% off your first payment after the free trial is up. We really preach uh, like one-on-one -on -one coaching in chat. Um, we're really good with that as well. We, we have a lot of people that reach out to us on a daily basis um, looking for information, whether you're talking about lineup construction, game, game selection, um, how to research properly, how to use the cheat sheet that I provide every day. And I'm going to share my screen with you soon here. We're going to kind of go over the cheat sheet. So that's that's really our number one thing that we have with Roto Pros is our personal touch and our, able to do one-on-one um, -on -one coaching with our customers to to not just provide them with picks on a daily basis, but to be able to educate them on how to become better players, how to research better, what's the right stats to look at. And we cover pretty much all sports, NHL, NBA, NFL, MLB, PGA, NASCAR. We've got M MMA coming in the in the future as well. So we cover a lot. So get over to rotopros.com. Check us out today. With that, let's jump into the video. I'm going to jump across here. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to look at the sheet here. So the six-game main slate, the pitcher options aren't that great tonight. We've got uh, Lucas, uh, the main pitching duo tonight, uh, pitching matchup on this slate is Chicago and Minnesota. This game is taking place in Chicago. We've got Lucas Giolito. He's had a heck of a turnaround season this year. Um, been right up there in the top of the ERA. We'll go look at his... Game logs here just for a little, just for a minute. So yeah, he's been really good. Uh, nine strikeouts, only got one run to Tampa Bay in his last start on the road. Kansas City um, there as well. He's only really had two rough starts uh, since the start of the season when he gave up four and five to Seattle and New York. That's when Seattle was red hot. Um, he had trouble with the Cubs in two starts. Other than that, he's been absolutely brilliant this year. Then we go look at Jose Barrios. Or Barrios, sorry. Um, He's been a pitcher that we've really looked at uh, home road splits over the last little while. He hasn't been um, terrible. Um, he's had a couple bad starts against at Seattle versus L.A. earlier in the season at Baltimore. But those are his only three starts where he's given up more than three earned runs in the entire season. So the floor is definitely there for him. He doesn't give you that K upside um, quite like Giolito does. Um, Giolito's up there in the 10.7 K per nine. But what stands out to me tonight, and the reason I have Jose Barrios listed as my top pitcher, is first of all, um, he's $300 cheaper than Giolito on DraftKings. He's only $200 more on FanDuel. He's a 143 favorite, and the reason for that is, who scares you more, the Twins offense or the, or the White Sox? I'll answer that for you. Um, it's, it's the Twins that's going to scare you more. So Giolito obviously makes a more of a GPP play for me just because he's going up against uh, Minnesota, who has been just pretty dominant pretty much the whole entire season. As you can see, they've been excellent against right-handed pitching. They have a 113 WRC+. plus. They only strike out just under 21% of the time. Um, they are a little bit better against lefties, but like I said, 13% better than league average uh, against right-handed pitching as well. So they've also been red hot over the last seven days, over the last 14 days, like 151 WRP. WRC plus the last seven days, 128 the last 14 days, striking out only 15% of the time the last seven days, and 19% the last 14. Terrible matchup for the best pitcher on the board tonight. So I'll be limiting him to GPP only here. Uh, Barrios is definitely my number one as the favorite in this game. Um, he goes up against a Chicago team that's been well below average, 87 WRC plus against righties, 26% K rate. So you're getting like six. 5 to 6% more Ks in the split when you go to Barrios here. And then we look at recent form. Um, we've got uh, last seven days, we've got Chicago with a 75 WRC plus 31% K rate. Over the last 14, it's been even worse. And the last 14 days, that's since the All-Star break. 69 WRC plus 28% K rate. So 
everything tonight, all, you know, I look at how many um, boxes a player. I don't just look at one thing. So I'll look at uh, um, Barrios checks. He's a favorite, uh, lower total, um, pretty good stadium in terms of runs. Um, not so great for home runs, obviously, but he's there. He's got the ERA. So he checks all the boxes, especially when it comes to the matchup side of things. Barrios is definitely going to be my top pitcher tonight. When it comes to value, uh, we got, it's going to be a tough one. I do like Jose Suarez. I actually had Griffin Cannon in here. It looked like he was going to possibly start. I really liked him in, on the cheap tonight. So I will go with Jose Suarez. A um, little bit more risk here for sure. I'm going to go look at his game logs real quick. And then I'll tell you what I do like about him. So yeah, he's made seven starts this year. Uh, as you can see, he's only given up more than three earned runs once. But he's given up, you know, quite a bit of hits. He's not going deep into games. Only twice he's made it, uh, three times he's made it into um, the sixth inning. Uh, twice he's made it into the sixth inning. Once he's completed five is what I'm trying to say here. Um, the home runs is the big issue. He's given up 10 home runs in those seven starts. 20% home run to fly ball rate. The walks aren't bad. They're not great. They've gotten better. As you can see, he's kind of trended. What stands out to me here is the K upside. The only thing I don't like about it, the matchup itself, is that Baltimore has been better against lefties this season. But as you can see, better against lefties, better than you know against righties when you look at the splits. They're still only an 86 WRC plus against lefties and a 27% K rate. So it's not as scary. I mean, looking at their projected lineup, I'm just going to go over to lineups here, tab, and we're going to go to Baltimore. Like the only guys, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in. This isn't exactly their projected lineup. Uh, Sucre is not going to be in there. We want uh, Pedro Severino. Have a look at Pedro Severino as well. So he's likely to get in there. And then we want uh, Hanser Alberto. So what I'm looking at, out of, if I could spell correctly. Sorry about that. And I'll do this before lineups come out just to kind of have a look and see um, what these players, you know, what the, what the lineup looks like against left-handed pitching, against right-handed pitching, um, the actual lineup that's going to be in there for the day. So as you can see, Trey Mancini, I'm looking at the batter versus split here. We've got Trey Mancini, he's got good splits versus lefties, Renato Nunez, Hanser Alberto, and Pedro Severino. So we've got those four batters that are really the ones to look out for for Suarez tonight. And if we kind of just break down his splits here, as you can see, he's been worse against righties, obviously, so there definitely is some red flags there. But if you're going GPP, which it is a smaller slate, so um, I would take a risk with Suarez. He seems really, he seems over expensive, and it is relative to the slate, obviously. Um, but that K upside is definitely there tonight against the Baltimore team. As you can see, they've cooled down um, a little bit. Actually, they've been a little bit hotter lately, but the K rate's still there. 27% K rate last 14, 20, almost 29% last seven days. So the upside is definitely there if you want to go that route at starting pitcher two. Um, I'm probably looking a little bit more to Plutko here for my SP2 and cash just because of the discount. You're only needing about 13, 14 points to get that 2x on DraftKings. And, you know, just kind of looking at his previous starts and how things have gone for him. He has hit, I'm just going to bring this up here. Uh, we're going to look at his game logs as well. So his last start was against Detroit. Um, he's had a couple rough ones in a row just because, or sorry, the last one was against Kansas City. He crushed value there. Um, the two before that, Detroit and Baltimore, which were plus matchups for him. Um, he actually had negative scores, but before that he had 11.8 points against Kansas City. He had 11.6 versus Texas. He had 21.9 versus Detroit. And then a uh, rough one against the Yankees, 21.7. So he's definitely got that 2x there, even in those starts against Kansas City and Texas, um, where he only went four innings in those two starts. He's still picking up 11.5 DraftKings points. So he's getting close to that. So if he gets up into that five innings tonight, I think it's definitely there for him to be your SP2 and that's kind of the way I've been going. I mean, if you're not, Suarez has a lot of risk there. So I just really like the discount at 6,700 against Kansas City here, who is just slightly below average against righties. They're terrible against lefties, obviously. 22% K rate versus righties, which isn't great. 
Um, we're not looking for a whole bunch of Ks from, from Pluko, obviously. He's got a 16% K rate, which is well below average, but he, he only has a 3% walk rate, which is excellent um, in terms of you know keeping a high floor and not giving up as many runs or as many opportunities to score runs to the opponent. And then we just look at uh, um, lately, Kansas City is 15% below average over the last seven days. Um, a little bit better over the last 14, so they've been kind of trending down over the last week when it comes to their offense. So I'm willing to take a shot on this slate with Pluko, not touching Purcello versus the Yankees. Uh, the Yankees have absolutely crushed him this year, like 13, 14 earned runs. He's been crushed by everyone lately anyways. Um, so I'm not looking at him as a cheap pitcher. Montgomery's got a 60 pitch count tonight, so definitely not going to be considering him against Cleveland anyway, who I'm actually going to be targeting for GPPs. We'll get into that. Gerardo's had some trouble this season um, as well. I really like Oakland bats. Uh, Eshelman, not looking at him either. Just another Baltimore arm that's had issues this season. Haven't dug too much into Verhagen. Uh, he was just confirmed here this morning for Detroit uh, going up against Seattle. We'll have a just a quick look at his uh, profile here. Yeah, so he's been in the Tiger system for a while. He's he's had a lot of times bouncing back and forth between the minors. He's come out of the bullpen so far this year, so I doubt he's going to be going deep. So when that happens, um, if you're targeting again, yeah, I give up six earned runs in one inning. So I won't be looking at him for pitcher here. But if you're targeting against him, say, with Seattle, one thing you're going to want to look at is the bullpen report. So we know that he's probably not going to be going deep into the game, so we want to have a look at the Tigers' bullpen. If we go into bullpen report, I always use control F just to do a search. And right there we find Detroit, one of the worst bullpens in the league, bottom five for the season. And they've trended actually down in every, you know, when looking at season versus last 30, last 14, and last seven. So definitely uh, going to be targeting Seattle against uh, the Tigers tonight in, in our stacks. I don't have it there, but I'm going to put that in there right now. The only other one I would really consider here as an SP2 tonight, uh, it looks like he's probably going to have an opener and there's no odds out on this game yet. I would assume Seattle's probably going to be with like a one, minus 120, 130 favorite here um, at home is Wade LeBlanc. Um, he has had some openers um, come out for him. Yeah, they haven't announced it yet, unfortunately. But uh, he's had openers for him so far this season. But, you know, he's he's been solid um, coming in. I'm just going to bring across his profile here uh, versus the Angels he went five innings after an opener last start he only gave up four hits two earned runs got four K's got roughed up by LA in LA the start before that but as you can see before he's going six four and two thirds five six and a third before that he only given up four total earned runs Oakland St. Louis Milwaukee and Baltimore in there so even if he has an opener that comes in for an inning I'm, I'm still willing to go ride with him considering he's only 5800 so that tells me on DraftKings, if we're looking for cash games, we really only need about 12 points from him. I think that's something he can definitely um, put forward tonight in this matchup against one of the worst offenses in baseball. And he's given us um, those 12 or more points in three of his last five starts. Um, two of those starts, that one against Baltimore was 28 DK points, and Milwaukee, um, which is surprising because of their powerful offense, uh, the bats in there, he scored 20 DK points. So he's got much more upside than that, but I think for a floor, 12 points, I think uh, he's kind of the guy I'm really probably going to key in on tonight, um, just being that he's another 900 less than Pluko himself. So to recap here before we move on, I'm looking at Barrios as my top pitcher in all formats. He's going to be the guy we'll use in, in cash games, and then to, on DraftKings, I will pair him with either Pluko or LeBlanc, just kind of waiting on some more information there to make a concrete decision, but right now I'm leaning LeBlanc as my SP2 for cash games, and then I'll have a mix of uh, Suarez, Pluko, and LeBlanc for SP2 and GPPs. I really like Suarez. Like I said, I think he's going to be lower owned just because Pluko and LeBlanc are cheaper, and um, LeBlanc obviously has a really good matchup versus Detroit, but Suarez, like I said, I really like his strikeout upside against a Baltimore team that strikes out a lot, so that's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, if you really want to go low owned, a Giolito with Suarez, I think is going to be super low owned. If you want to go contrarian tonight in GPP, that's uh, maybe a route to go. I'm kind of concentrating. I don't. I've only been doing about one lineup on each side and kind of running like a hybrid slash cash lineup that I run in about 
if I'm running, say, $100, I'll put uh, 70 to $80 of that in 50-50s double-ups, uh, head-to-heads, and then the other $20 in single-entry and three-entry max uh, GBPs there as well, just with that one lineup. Um, lately, if I get to a point, um, you know, when I'm making my skeletons where I leave two or three players out and I find two variations that I really, really like and can't decide between, I will split them and I'll run two. Um, just split it right down the middle and run those lineups split in my cash games as well as my GPPs. But uh, definitely hit me up on chat as we get closer to lock as lineups come in. I'll kind of let you know how I'm running things tonight. So with that, we're going to jump across now and we're going to dive into uh, some teams to stack on the main slate. And new feature on here in case uh, you haven't checked out my other videos or anything yet and you're wondering why there's links here. I like the Yankees, obviously, number one. Um, they've been absolutely crushing lately coming off that series versus Minnesota. They now face Rick Porcello, who I said they've crushed twice this year. Um, they've just been rolling. So the new feature is... I like New York, and if you want to see New York's lineup, obviously it's not out tonight, but you decide that you like New York. Now you want to see their lineup for tonight, um, how their splits are versus pitchers, what their K rates and stuff are, comparing it to the pitcher that's out there and the actual lineup that's confirmed for today. You just hover over NYY here, New York Yankees, and you click this link above right here, and it just takes you directly to the lineup page right to the Yankees lineup. Um, if this lineup was in and confirmed, it would be here with all their stats. Let's just throw this in here. So that's kind of what we're looking at here tonight. If this was the lineup that we're going to run out, which it is going to be very close to what we see here um, against Purcello. So we're looking at stats versus righties. DJ LeMayu, 130 WRC plus versus righties. Aaron Judge, 142. Um, Carnacion, 120. Gregorius, 125. 138 for Torres, 139 for Urshela. Like it's, it's a very strong lineup against righties. Like I said, they've crushed. Um, before and one way I actually like going about doing a Yankee lineup tonight because they're expensive I'm probably going to be using Barrios especially on FanDuel here is doing a bit of a wraparound stack um, so obviously you're not going to be able to get like LeMayu, Judge, Encarnacion and Gregorius those four batters into your lineup just because of the pricing um, but what you could do here is either we always talk about maybe going for the middle of the lineup or the bottom I like Mike Talk when he's getting a lot of playing time it doesn't look like Gardner's going to be back in the lineup um, he's actually out, so he's getting some out of playing time. He's only 2700 on FanDuel. So what you can do is actually fit Talkman with LeMayu and Judge or Talkman with one of those two, and it kind of creates that correlation with the wraparound stack, um, and it has actually worked out quite well when they score a lot of runs. The bottom of the lineup, you know, they're turning over that lineup. Talkman gets on base, and then he can get dr driven in by LeMayu, Judge, and Hernacion. Because really, when you're talking about your, your stacks one through four, yes, they're getting more plate appearances per game, but what we don't understand is that cleanup hitter is really only projected to hit fourth in the order like once unless the lineup turns over and the leadoff hitter happens to lead off an inning again. So that's when I really start looking towards some of these wraparound stacks. Um, like even if you get into Torres or Shell if they're hitting down here in seventh and eighth, a seven, eight, nine, one wraparound stack or an eight, nine, one, two stack gives you some um, salary relief that is needed if you're using a top pitcher, but it still gives you that upside with using the top of the lineup with some of the guys like especially the Yankees who give you some upside in the bottom of the lineup as well, being that they're a very deep lineup. So Yankees are my number one. Um, I'll definitely look to almost all their players, but uh, the outfield's kind of where I'm, I'm focusing. I like Encarnacion for GPPs at first base. He's very expensive when looking at the first base position here. I'm probably going to lean to some other guys, especially on FanDuel, Danny Santana at 3,200, uh, Mark Canna as well, and that kind of helps me transition right into Oakland, who's my second favorite stack tonight. The park isn't great, as you can see, but they're facing Gerardo. Um, he's had you know ERA 492, XFIPS 488, so right there in line. He's got that high whip as well, 145 whip, so he's given a lot of opportunities for teams to score runs, although he doesn't give up a ton of fly balls. I've actually used him as a as a punt pitcher before in the right matchups. I don't think Oakland's that matchup for him, given up 40% hard contact. Oakland has been slightly better against lefties, but there's some hitters in the lineup that are, you know, they, they've actually crushed um, righties. Uh, first base is kind of where I start. Um... Mark Can, I was just talking about him. I love the value on FanDuel at just 2,900 facing Gerardo. Last year, we kind of looked to him only when he, when they faced lefties. This season, he's getting regular playing time, and he's crushed righties. 
um, large sample size. If we scroll over, we can actually see the size of the sample. And we get into the right hand, left hand pitching splits here. So we see from Mark Kenny, he's got 170 at bats versus righties, and he's got 84 at bats versus lefties. So pretty good sample size. He's been a regular player this year. 383 Wobo, 144 WRC plus, and just shy of a 300 ISO versus righties, facing a pitcher, um, a below average pitcher. I mean, the hard contact isn't exactly there for him. He's not a home run guy, but for cash games, I love him on on FanDuel, just 2900. And then his teammate Matt Olson, I'll definitely be paying up for him on FanDuel for just 200 more. He's crushed as well, um, 27 WRC plus, 261 ISO, 53% hard contact. So those pair, and I mean you can, um, I'm not sure if he's multi-position eligible on DraftKings or not, but Canna and also you can fit them together for sure on FanDuel using your flex position. So I definitely like going that route, um, pairing them both together. If you want to do that in cash games, I'm fine with it. I uh, lean Canna, but if you're doing stacking for GPPs, Pairing them together makes a lot of sense. Um, other players on Oakland that stand out to me tonight. Uh, I wasn't really looking at second base. Matt Chapman, um, going to be one of my top guys. Again, FanDuel, 3400 As you can see, the price differential here from FanDuel to DraftKings. Makes a ton of sense to go with him in cash games. On Not a lot of players I like at third base right now. He's been solid all season, as you can see with his uh, stats here. These are just his season stats. 359 on base percentage, 540 slugging percentage. He gives you power with 22 home runs. He gives you runs scored. Um, if we go look at his ex woba, it's it's right there in line with where his woba is. So there's not like there's a whole bunch of regression coming. He's got a 93 mile an hour exit velocity. He's got strong splits versus righties. 367 woba, 134 wrc plus. So he kind of checks all the boxes, um, including the matchup and his stats. The only thing, the down part is the park, but uh, he's done good at home, so I'm not really worried about it. I expect Oakland to, you know, they're they're in that 5.3 implied runs. They're a team that I think can easily go over that tonight in this matchup. We are looking at Texas here, so let's just quickly go look at their bullpen report. They, again, are one of the worst bullpens in the league, so Gerardo goes 4 or 5 innings, and you got 4 or 5 innings um, on, uh, you know, facing the Texas bullpen. So you have that advantage there as well. So Oakland definitely stands out to me as my second favorite stack. And then mixing in some GPP, like I said, I'm going to be mixing in Seattle, um, going up against Verhagen, who's probably not going to go deep. He struggled early coming out of the bullpen anyway. We talked about uh, bullpens as well. Tigers are right there with the Rangers as one of the worst. So it makes sense to target them, knowing that the pitcher's probably not going to be going deep into the game. Angels going up against Eshelman. Um, Baltimore's another team with a bad bullpen. Um, this is kind of a theme. Pitchers that aren't going, starting pitchers that aren't going to go deep into the game um, on teams that have bad bullpens. Always good for targeting. Going to go with the Angels here. A um, couple players for the Angels that are going to stand out to me tonight. Just looking at their projected lineup. I like Fletcher if he's back in the leadoff spot. He's only 2,700 on FanDuel. Then you got Trout to anchor him with. So you got the cheap guy and the expensive guy if you want to go there. I think that works in all formats, actually. Um, but for GPPs, I mean, you can add. Otani, Upton, Calhoun. You can get down there into pool holes. I don't mind uh, Rengifo as a punt at second base. He's very cheap. Um, he's going to be hitting down the lineup. He's been solid lately if you, if you really need to find some salary relief there. If you want a punt catcher, I guess you could go Dustin Garneau. It's not one of my favorite plays. But uh, DraftKings, definitely what I've been doing lately is just kind of going with the lowest priced catcher in the best position. So if there's like four catchers, 2,500 down to 2,000, I'll pick the cheapest one um, that is in the best matchup. So that's just kind of the way I go about doing it. It's kind of like defenses in football. I'll go with the cheapest defense in the best matchup. So it's kind of the way I'm looking at that. And then we're looking at uh, Cleveland as well, going up against Mike Montgomery. Talked about that a little bit as well. Cleveland is heating up with their offense. They've got... Uh, um, Mike Montgomery's only going 60 pitches, so we're likely to only see him for two, two and a half innings, something, two, three innings, something like that. So they may only get a couple at bats. But guys that I like that hit lefties well, um, going up against him that stand out, the ones that stand out, Jordan Leplo is going to be cheap um, in the outfield. He hits lefties well. If you catcher, my number one catcher tonight is going to be um, Roberto Perez. I believe he got a night off to 
Plowicki last night, so he should be in there. He crushes lefties. He may only get a couple at bats, but he's been only slightly below average versus righties, so I don't mind. I think you know he's going to stay in there for the whole game. He's going to get his at bats. We don't need a bunch because he's cheap. Um, Jose Ramirez is heating up a lot, especially since like mid June, especially in July, he's starting to hit some hit for power as well. He gives you that steal upside in there as well. Carlos Santana has been um, a, a consistent player all year that we can consider in cash games. Lindor with his price at uh, shortstop. We'll just jump across here. He's going to be GPP only for me tonight just because, um, especially on FanDuel, Gregorius is the easy choice for me when we're talking shortstop on FanDuel just because of the price differential, $800 cheaper than Lindor. Um, Lindor, I might, you know, the splits, he just hasn't been as good against lefties, but like I said, Montgomery's probably not going to be in there. Like Kansas City has not been that great in terms of bullpen, um, so we could consider him. But I, I'd probably go cheaper when it comes to DraftKings cash games and go with like a semi or even a punt down here. It's not really a punt, I guess, but a lower end value with J.P. Crawford hitting at the top. Near, he's been hitting second um, for the Mariners there as well. So that's kind of the way I would go cash games um, for DraftKings. So that covers my main teams. I covered the Yankees and Oakland as my top stacks tonight, top teams to target for offense. And then Cleveland's right up there. Um, there are some guys that I will consider for cash games. I discussed that as well. Um, but for the main part, they're going to be... Blue doesn't necessarily mean just GPP only. Um, it's secondary as well. So I will target those teams for cash games. But for stacking, they're you know third, fourth on my list when it comes to teams that I'd like to target tonight that I'll have exposure to throughout all my lineups on both sites. And then I talked about LA and Seattle. Um, as well. Seattle's run line is probably a little bit low here, but again, Seattle and Detroit's odds haven't updated. I'll have that update coming fairly soon. Um, so with that, thanks for joining me on the video today. Um, this is a new setup, so if you have any feedback, things you'd like to see, we've got the ticker at the bottom showing you the games and stuff like that. I'm going to add some more stuff in the future. Things that you'd like to see during the video that I could maybe put over here on the sides. Um, anything, anything that would help you in your research process while you watch the video, definitely hit me up with your feedback, how you like it. Uh, let us know. Um, again, if you're not a Rotor Pros member, get over to rotorpros.com, get your free trial for your weekly, monthly, or yearly subscription, and join us in the members community chat. Thanks for checking out the video. Leave your comments below in the video. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the chat room as we make lineups closer to lock. Cheers.